Hey everyone, I'm Tony Dunst, host of the World Poker Tour, here at WPT Choctaw in Durant, Oklahoma, where on day 1A I bagged 318,000 chips. Let's break down how I got there. So I registered right at the start of the event, and the first couple of levels were active right away. There was a lot of multi-way pots, and I had a three-handed pot where I hit trips against somebody on an ace-eye board. It came ace-3-3 three, three with a flush draw, and I had a king three of clubs in the big blind, and I was able to check raise on the flop, bet the turn, and then bet quite big on the river. The flush had missed, but a 10 had hit on the river, and my opponent had ace 10. So he called with top two pair, not a lot he can do there, and right away I went from 40 to over 60,000. Just a few minutes after I sat down, uh, so this was at the 500 big blind level, um, the open was to four and a half X under the gun, there was a flat, and I have a stack of clubs. I have my starting stack of 40K, so I call to the 2200. A short stack goes all in for about 8500, uh, and it folds back around to the opener, who calls the 8500. The flatter calls the 8500. I've got a stack of clubs. I'm in there too, you guys. Let's go. So we've got a pretty big pot. We've got like 45K in the pot now. This I've literally just sat down like a few minutes ago. Um, I end up chopping the pot with the short stack all in. So it was it was kind of a bizarre situation. The players that I was in the hand with, I had never seen them before. So um, I, you know, wanted to be a little bit cautious. I have a very strong hand in position, but I also wanted to just be uh, a little bit cautious with my starting stack having just sat down. Frank the Tank Stapuchin announced to everybody that he was buying drinks all day for everybody in the tournament. So it was immediately kind of a drinking table and a very social table too. We were having a good time, hanging out, chatting. People weren't really in their phones. We were just kind of catching up on what everybody had done over the last year, how much poker they had played, things like that. It's my first WPT here at Choctaw, but I've actually been here before. Texas is where I learned how to play poker. It's where I started playing poker in 2005 and 2006 once I, well, when I switched from the chess world into the poker world. Um, I started playing poker in Texas before this casino actually was built. Um, and so it's, it's pretty cool. It's kind of a big homecoming for me to come back. I see, a, I see a lot of people I haven't seen in maybe over 10 years, you know, that I don't, they're still playing poker here in Texas. They enjoy their cards out here, let me tell you. This is a town, and when I say town, I mean state. This is a town where they enjoy poker. If you like poker, the WPT Choctaw Stop should be on your, on your schedule because they have a great love for cards and, you know, Texas is where the, uh, the birthplace of Texas Hold'em. We are in Oklahoma, but really it's kind of Texas and Oklahoma because it's right on the border. It's everybody, it's, you know, um, everything around here is called Texoma. Just if, if, so you, you understand, it's Texoma because they're so close. So the table yesterday was playing a little more loose passive than some of our other events where the field is more populated by pros. And because of that, I was able to open up the type and range of hands that I was playing. So, you know, I could raise suited connectors from every position. I could call with some of the offsuit broadways in positions that I usually wouldn't. You know, I opened any suited jack uh, off of the button. I opened a jack eight suited in early position that I wouldn't have done otherwise. So days like that are fun because you actually get to play more hands and fight for pots after the flop that you usually wouldn't be able to win. Uh, they had moved a new player to our table. He'd been there for maybe an hour, and he was playing pretty loose, pretty splashy. And we played a pot where under the gun raised to 2,000. I was in middle position with my kings in three bet to 6,000. The player on my left cold called that raise to 6,000. And then the original opener folded his hand, so it was just heads up between the two of us. And the flop came 8-7 of spades, with a four or five of clubs, on something low card. I bet 5,000, my opponent called. Turn was a red eight, which I felt was a pretty good card. I didn't see any reason why he would have an eight after cold calling my three bet. So I bet 8,000, he called, and the river was a red 10. So the flop flush draw had missed. The only hand I really needed to worry about my opponent having was pocket tens. Maybe if he had slow played aces, but people don't typically do that. So I went all in for his last 25 or 30,000, and I mean, he beat me into the pot. Like, he got his chips in so fast, he couldn't wait. I thought, oh man, did I lose his hand somehow? And I table my kings, and he slides his cards towards the muck, 
And then the dealer says, no, no, you're an all-in player. We need to expose your hand. And he ended up having Jack-10 offsuit with no spades. So he got a little ambitious pre-flop and paid the price for it after the flop. Uh, we got a few new players who um, were quite aggressive. And then we had a few very big pots that kind of shifted the chips all to one side of the table. Um, and so that was a little bit tricky uh, to, um, to play through uh, a lot of the players kind of started, a few of the players started targeting each other and uh, I kind of had to, with my stack, I kind of had to, thankfully I was in position, I kind of had to just observe for a little while, let them play their little games and then pick my spots accordingly. Thankfully I had position at this table uh, on all of the action that was happening and so I was able to observe tendencies, see what kinds of hands were being shown down, see what kinds of bet sizings were being used, see how frequently uh, players were entering the pot. All of these uh, these things are really important in live poker, especially for me. I don't play as much live poker. I'm primarily an online player. Um, and so I really try to focus on all of these details uh, in live poker. We're only playing one table. This is the table that we need to be focusing on. And so um, I try to pay attention as much as much as possible. It is exhausting though. It is It is quite tiring to do so. A big part of my plan going into day two will depend on my table draw, how many professionals I have on the table, whether they have enough chips to withstand some pressure, but I'm in a really good position now with about 20-25% of the field remaining to apply a ton of pressure on my opponents as we approach the money bubble, especially if they're not professional and they are more likely to have satellited into this event or are playing one of their larger events of the year. It's actually a great opportunity to make their lives difficult approaching the money and accumulate a lot of chips. This property is actually quite large and expansive. Um, they've done a nice job, and I remember when it was just one building. I'm very impressed with what they've done here. There's a lot to do. Uh, the grounds are quite nice. You can take a walk outside. You can go all around the casino. They've got a huge food area. Um, and then if you wanted to get in the car and drive, things aren't that too far away, just maybe 20 minutes down the road. Uh, there's some great restaurants and you know some small towns. and. We are in a, a very, uh, you know, Texas, Oklahoma place. You, you want to embrace and go, you know, get out there and look at some Longhorn. They're all over the place. I would say if somebody bagged a WPT for their first time on day two, my recommendation going forward is not to play scared approaching the bubble. You do want to be conservative, especially as you get really close to the bubble with the type of hands you commit all your chips to an all-in with, especially if you're gonna be the one calling that all-in. But conversely, I sometimes see people make a day two, they're a little bit nervous, they really don't wanna bust out with the wrong hand and have to go home and tell their friends, yeah, I had chips, but then I blew it and I didn't make the money. So sometimes people play a little over conservative and you do have to accept that, hey, even on the bubble, you still have to play poker, you still have to take risks, and sometimes it's not gonna turn out your way but you definitely don't want to bleed out to a point where you have no chance to go deep in the tournament. I plan on enjoying myself in day two. I have a nice stack. It's always really nice to not go into a day two so so short stacked. You, you, you don't feel like you're just gonna be sitting down and then getting right back up. Um, so that feeling alone kind of, you know, just kind of propels you into a, a good mindset going into day two uh, to hopefully build.